We're going to work problems now uh, that uses vector addition that we've been learning for uh, in a practical way, uh, relative velocity problems. And we're going to start off with the simplest type. Uh, suppose like this right here is the flat ground right here. And maybe it's a railroad track. And we're going to put a flatbed railroad car here on it. We're just looking at a side view of this thing. And let's say the velocity of the train, that's V sub T, is equal to 40 miles per hour. So we can draw that as a vector, right? There's our the velocity of the train. The train is moving to the right at 40 miles per hour. And then standing at the edge of this is former Buchanan student and Major League Baseball pitcher Garrett Olsen. He was a former student of mine way back in the day. And uh, that's not a very good picture of him. He's, he's, and that, but he throws a ball. So he winds up and he throws this ball pretty fast. Let's say he's just warming up, though. Maybe it's not that fast. So here's, here it is. He's throwing the ball. This represents the velocity vector of the ball. And this velocity is 60 miles per hour. Now, when he was throwing as fast as he throw like 95 to 100 miles an hour as a left-hander. That's why he, he's playing in the major leagues. But um, now, my question to you is this. Is that really the velocity of the ball? What do we mean by the velocity of the ball? This is the velocity the ball came out of his hand compared to what? And that's what you have to think about when you think about velocity. When you tell somebody how fast something's going, you have to say, compared to what? Because let's say um, somebody is standing here, maybe a, a Major League Baseball scout, and they're holding a radar gun. And they're measuring the velocity, sends out a pulse of radio waves, and it bounces off the ball. And from that, they figure out how fast the ball is going. Well, what if there was a guy standing way over here, maybe, on the tracks? not very smart but he's holding this this radar gun and he's also measuring the reflected wave of that ball and he says no no that ball's not going 60 miles an hour what do you think this gun is going to measure 100 miles per hour right because the ball not only has a velocity that Garrett added to it but it has a velocity from the train that it was riding on before he threw it does that make sense to everybody that it would be 100 miles per hour so how fast something is going depends on where you're measuring it from. And we call that relative velocity. Are you measuring it from the moving train or you're, are you measuring it from the unmoving ground? So we usually have one reference frame that isn't moving. And that's going to be the ground. And, uh, but this is measuring the velocity from the train. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to call this the velocity of the ball. Now watch this little subscript. With respect to the train. That little slash means with respect to or compared to the train. So this B slash T, that stands for the velocity of the ball compared to the train. Okay. So um, when you say, well, what is the velocity of the ball compared to the ground? Now. I'm not going to put the compared to the ground on there, right? I'm just going to call it the velocity of the ball. And when it's just velocity of the ball, that means compared to our unmoving reference frame, in this case, the ground. OK? How did we, we know it's 100 miles per hour. How did we get that? Well, we said the, well it's the velocity of the ball compared to the train plus the velocity of the train. Doesn't that make sense? OK, does this make sense to everybody? But here's what I want you to realize. Here's the big idea. This is a vector equation. I arranged this problem to be very simple because these two vectors are in the same direction. So you can just add them as if they're scalars. So, But they are vectors. They have magnitude and direction. 
So the ball here, the velocity of the ball compared to the train is 60 miles per hour, but how do we add vectors? We hook them up head to tail. So here's the velocity of the train. So this is 60 miles per hour plus 40 miles per hour gives me, now usually we start our, our resultant vector where the first one started and end it where the second one ends, but I don't want to draw over the top because it's a straight line, so I'm just going to draw it below here. So the velocity of the ball is equal to 100 miles per hour. Now, of course, this is physics, so we have to take the simple and make it as complicated as possible. I'm going to show it the way we did vector addition before. The velocity of the ball compared to the train plus the velocity of the train. See how I'm, I'm stacking them on top of each other the way we did those last two assignments? And this is going to be equal to the velocity of the ball. Well, let's put these in rectangular coordinates. What's the velocity of the ball compared to the train? 60 miles per hour. Remember x and y? This is 60 miles per hour in the x direction. How far, uh, what is, does it have an, a y component? No, it's zero. The velocity of the train is 40 miles per hour in the x direction, zero in the y. Okay, you with me? Um, so where did you get the, again? the what? This is going to the right. It has no, it has no y comp. Okay. Now we just add. And so this is going to be 100 miles per hour in the x direction. But the ball's not moving at all in the y direction. Now, yes, you can say, well, there isn't there gravity, Mr. Lake. Yeah, yeah, but we're, we're going to ignore that. We're going to do that later in the year. Let's keep it simple for right now. What if I wanted to express this in polar coordinates? What would this be in polar coordinates? Well, what's the magnitude? A hundred miles per hour. Let me close the door. And then the y component. I'm sorry. The y component is zero. It's all in the x. So what angle is that? What angle goes strictly in the x direction? Zero degrees. So it kind of looks the same, doesn't it? But it's not. What if Garrett decided to throw the ball in the opposite direction? What if Garrett threw the ball to the, to, the, to the left instead of to the right, but the train is still moving 40 miles per hour to the right? In that case, you would say, oh, um, the velocity of the ball, you'd start here, is compared to the train is negative 60 miles per hour, while this is uh, 40 miles per hour Compared to the, this is the velocity of the ball compared to the train. This is the velocity of the train. So this would be uh, negative 20 miles per hour. You see that it would be negative 20. And so you would say 20 miles per hour at an angle of 180 degrees. Okay. So that this is what you do if, if they line up. They're in the same direction. But what do we do if, what, what would happen if Garrett uh, threw it sideways off the train. Let's look down on it. Let's, let's hover over. Let's pretend like we're in a helicopter looking down uh, on this train. So here's the flatbed train. And it's moving to, to the right, uh, or actually we'll say to the east at 40 miles per hour. And then he throws it to the north at 60 miles per hour. So this is the, the velocity of the train again. And this is the velocity of the ball compared to the train. So Garrett, this is what Garrett sees. Garrett sees the ball moving away from the train like this. But remember, he's moving along with the train. So the ball and uh, 
Garrett, are moving along like this with the velocity of the train. But if you're in a helicopter hovering above the ground and the helicopter's not moving, what do you see? You see the vector addition of this, the velocity of the ball compared to the train plus the velocity of the train. So you would see the ball moving like this. So that, that's the actual velocity of the ball compared to the ground. Do you see that it's just vector addition, like what we did before? In this case, though, we would say the velocity of the ball compared to the train. Well, in, in, uh, in xy coordinates, the velocity of the ball compared to the train has no x component. It's all in the y direction, or all to the north. And I would say that that's uh, 0 in the x and 60 miles per hour in the y. Do you see that? Plus the velocity of the train. Well, the train is moving in the x direction at 40 miles per hour. Oh, I'm off screen. Tell me if I'm off screen again. Because I'm recording it. And this, and it's not moving at all in the y direction. And now we just add it like we did before. But now we have a, an x component of the velocity and a y component of the velocity. So what do I have to do now if I want to express this in polar coordinates? I have to use Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent, just the way we did in the last two assignments. Okay, now I am, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to leave it to you to convert this to polar coordinates, because you know how to do that already. But I want to show you the problems that we're going to be doing, these three homework problems. And these are not trivial problems. I want to get you started, at least on number one, though. So here's the worksheet. And I know you can't read it from the back of the room. That's OK. You got it in front of you. So just take a look at it. But let's get number one started. It says, a ferry boat is trying to cross a river. A boat, if the boat, um, if, if boat, <laughs> should be if the boat, is heading due north with a velocity of 12 meters per second compared to the water, and the water is moving five meters per second to the west, what is the velocity, speed and direction, of the boat compared to the ground? Okay, so let's do A first, given. And by the way, treat A and B as completely separate problems because they're, they're going to be, it's going to be a different picture, it's going to be different everything. So the boat thinks, the boat compared to the water is moving at 12 meters per second and it's heading due north. So this is the velocity of the boat compared to the water is equal to 12 meters per second and due north, right, but what direction is that? 90 degrees. And then the velocity of the water, what does it say? It's the velocity of the water is 5 meters per second. and it's going to the west, right? Is that what it says? Yeah, to the west. So that's going to be 5 meters per second. And what direction is to the west? 180 degrees. And what are we trying to find? The velocity of the boat compared to the ground that isn't moving. See, it's in the water, and it's moving with respect to the water, but the water's also moving. And we want to know, you know, what is the boat actually doing compared to the, to the bank of the river that's not moving? So we'll solve it. Well, the velocity of the boat is equal to the velocity of the boat compared to the water plus the velocity of the water. See, if you say it like that, it makes sense, doesn't it? This is a vector equation. So treat it like a vector. So, um, well, let's do that. Um, velocity of the boat compared to the water. 
I can easily convert this to rectangular coordinates, x and y. plus the velocity of the water, x and y. Try to do it. And then you'll get the velocity of the boat in terms of x and y. Draw a little sketch of it. The velocity of the boat compared to the water plus the velocity of the water gives me the velocity of the boat. So this is the actual velocity of the boat right here. It thinks it's going like this in the water, but the water's moving too. So you add those two and you get the actual thing. And I'm going to leave it to you to finish this problem. And then B is a, a little different. Now, some of these are, more, are pretty challenging. Here's a hint. Draw the draw the triangle draw the vector triangle on all of them and you know based on what you, uh, and and you'll be able to figure it out because on some of them I give you the direction but I don't give you the magnitude and uh, so this will be uh, this will be a little stinker this pro some of these problems especially like part B is a little bit di more uh, difficult anyway good luck and I'll s have a good weekend see you